Hi, it's Chrissy Miles, and you're watching The Chrissy Miles Show, where I teach you how to take eternal truth and produce extreme results. In today's episode, I'm going to teach you how to thrive in your relationships. I struggled in relationships for a long, long time. I had friends who were with me and then they were against me. I had family members who were against me my whole life, uh, not by any fault of their own, but it was just a drama filled situation. Um, I had bad relationships with guys. I mean, you name it, relationship problems everywhere. But after learning these tips that I'm gonna share with you today, I have learned how to thrive in my relationships where now I have friends who are with me, they're not against me, giving me bad advice. I have a happy marriage of 18 years and a family that's actually committed to each other and to forgiveness and working things out. And so follow these tips and I'm gonna show you how to thrive. So subscribe to this channel and click the bell to get notified of more of my proven methods to get more out of life. Here's the first step in learning how to thrive in your relationships. You have to learn to die to yourself. Now, I know that this can be a little bit of a challenging subject to talk about, and I don't mean that you have to sacrifice yourself in an unhealthy way or in any kind of abusive relationship. All I mean by that is that you have to learn how to put other people's interests above yourself. And again, it's not to do it in an unhealthy way where people take advantage of you. That's not really the point. But the point is is that whenever you want to serve yourself or elevate yourself and your desires and your personal wants and needs you're gonna have a hard time thriving in re your relationships because relationships really are about give and take and if all you're doing is taking from people in order to serve yourself nobody's going to want to be in a relationship with you and you'll struggle so step one is dying to yourself which means that your interest is in hearing from God about how you can best interact with people Again, it doesn't mean that you have to lose your identity or lose yourself. It simply means that your desire is to hear from God on how he would interact and treat people kind of forgiveness that he would offer to people, the level of relationship that he would offer to people. And you would be surprised when you learn about God and his character that he's not simply letting people walk all over him and he doesn't expect you to do that as well. But what he does do is he lays out for us a series of precepts, if you will, or guidelines on how you can have thriving relationships and putting other people above yourself is the first key to that. Here's step number two, be made new in the attitude of your mind. So this concept comes from Ephesians chapter four. It says this, it says, you were taught with regard to your former way of life to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires and to be made new in the attitude of your minds and to put on the new self created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. So there's a lot in this passage, but essentially what Paul is writing and he's saying is he said that you have a former way of life, meaning that before you came into relationship with God, we had a way of living that was impacted by the world and the standard of the world. But if you want to learn how to thrive in your relationships, you have to purposely put off your old self which that simply means that you make a conscious choice not to live by the old person that you once were because that old person, according to this passage, is being corrupted by its own deceitful desires. And what is a deceitful desire? Deceitful desire is when you expect something to happen, but you're going to go about getting that thing that you want to happen through your own methods. It's almost like you are trying to manipulate and control all of your circumstances to get what you want. And the reason why that's deceitful is that God says that he gives you everything free. He gives you everything freely. He gives you things without having to work for them because of his goodness and his, his way of dealing with his children. He offers you things that are free of charge. But our old desire, which is corrupted, is that we try to get things out of our own effort. And this is why it puts us in situations where relationships just don't thrive because we're trying to get the things that we want through a means that is not really God's prescribed way to receive the things that we need. 
So to counterbalance this and to overcome and thrive in your relationships, Paul writes and he says, you have to be made new in the attitude of your mind, which means that you have to have an attitude shift, an attitude adjustment. You remember when you're a kid and your parents, you know, scolded you to get an attitude adjustment, or maybe your teacher said that to you at one point. And it's, it's really true. Like we have to have a different attitude in the way that we approach things. And the attitude that Paul is writing about here in this passage is to think about yourself from a new vantage point and a new viewpoint. Now, when you have accepted God into your life, you have been created to be like him. It says in true righteousness and in true holiness, which means that now, since you're like him, you are right like him in your inmost being, which causes you to live like him, which means now in order to thrive in your relationships, you look for opportunities for God to move in these relationships, as opposed to you trying to put your hand into everything to control every outcome in every circumstance. So if you wanna thrive in your relationships, you have to be made new in the attitude of your mind. So let me know in the comments below, in what relationships would you really love to thrive? Are you having a difficult time in your marriage? Are you having a difficult time with some friends or in your family? In what relationships do you wish that you could thrive and overcome some of the problems that you've been facing? Comment below. Here's tip number three. You have to learn how to give out of what's called the overflow. So when you look at the passage that we just read in Ephesians chapter four, that God says that you have now been made like God in true righteousness and holiness, what that allows you to do is it allows you to serve people and give out of the abundance that he has now given you. Most of the times in relationships, we're trying to give out of our own source. We're trying to give from a pattern that maybe we learned from our grandparents or our parents. And while those things are good precepts to have in your life or good habits to develop, it still has a human limitation associated with it. But when you learn to tap into God's kind of love for people in all of your relationships, you're going to be giving out of the abundance of what God has given you. Now, let me also say though, that even though God has given you this abundance in your spirit, you may not have learned how to tap into it. You may not have learned how to access that. So if you wanna thrive in your relationships, you have to learn how to access what God has given you, which means that your relationship with him has to be so intimate and so overflowing that you feel like you have more to give. Anybody who is not giving over and above themselves are probably in a position where they one, don't know what God has given them, or two, they have not learned how to access that in their own lives, and therefore they're only giving out of what they have available to them in their flesh, in their, in their human part of who they are. Giving out of the overflow, however, to help your relationships thrive is about knowing who you are, knowing what God has given you, experiencing what God has given you, and then being able to give to someone out of the overflow of what you experience in God every single day. Step number four is putting others first. When you learn how to put other people first, after you have tapped into the overflow, what that allows you to do is put people in a position where you desire to help them and serve them. You know, there's a lot of talk today in social justice circles about helping other people, and that's a grand thing if you're in a position where you can help. But what if you're in a position where you don't feel like you can help, or you're the one that needs help? You can actually overcome these things by understanding who you are in Christ, what God has given to you, and when you have that as a foundation, you begin to put others first in your relationship. Serving others is not always about not getting your needs met, but understanding that when God has fully met your needs and you're actually experiencing that, that gives you the power, if you will, and the desire to put other people ahead of yourself. You actually get in a position where you enjoy seeing other people's needs met, but that can only happen if you're feeling fulfilled on the inside yourself. For more tips on how to thrive in your relationships, I want you to download my free MP3 called Relationship 911. This is where I'm gonna teach you how to get out of a 911 situation in your relationship, something that's fallen apart, and either turn that relationship into a thriving relationship or knowing how to let go in order to open yourself up for a relationship that will thrive in the future. So follow the link in the description and download Relationship 911 for free. 
So thanks for watching today and I hope you enjoyed these tips on how to thrive in your relationships. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button and if you know somebody who needs to be thriving in their relationships, then share this with them. And if you haven't done so yet, make sure you subscribe to this channel for new episodes each Tuesday where I teach you how to get more out of life.